and welcome back to another Doctor Who action figure review. Yes, it's that time of year again for some new B&M exclusive Doctor Who releases, and today we're taking a look at the first of those, which is the History of the Daleks number 13 from The Five Doctors, featuring the First Doctor, as played by Richard Herndl, and the Dalek from the Death Zone. The First Doctor figure is, of course, long-awaited. We've known about the prototype for several years, uh, but now we finally can add it to our collections and we have this lovely new Dalek which has some new pieces as well. Before we get into the nitty gritty of the figures, let's take a look at the brand new packaging. So the figures come packaged in a revamped window display from previous years featuring the new diamond logo style guide. It follows the similar packaging we've seen with the regeneration set with the new sonic screwdriver. It's got the new logo, it's got that white motif, we've got the Whitaker era and onward TARDIS on the front and it still retains some of the elements that we'd seen before you know the same sort of font with the history of the Daleks set at the bottom we've got the gold limited edition foil sticker we've got the little diamond box outs like we've seen with the regeneration set and the sonic screwdriver and then you can see that the diamond logo is on the sides as well and on the top we've got the longer logo the other thing worth mentioning is much like with last year's history of the Dalek sets there is no actual plastic window. The figures are within a bubble that is stuck to the back of the cardboard. There's an interior cardboard piece, which I'll show off in a minute. So again, limiting the amount of plastic like we'd seen last year. And then on the back of the box, we have a synopsis and also some behind the scenes information about the new Dalek. And then taking a look at that interior packaging, we've got this blue explosion of a vortex with the figures attached to the back. Again, this might be an issue for collectors who used to like taking the figures out, but also putting them back in the box, because once you take the plastic off of this, you're almost 100% about to damage the cardboard backdrop. And of course, it's a shame that we no longer get the little diorama backdrops that we used to, because this would have been a cracking one to have that Death Zone Hall of Mirrors display, with perhaps the Tomb of Rassilon out in the background. Here are our figures out of the box, and let's start with the new First Doctor who looks absolutely superb. That is an amazing head sculpt, a really strong likeness to Richard Herndl. So like I said at the start, this is a figure that we sort of knew about in as much as we knew there was a prototype that existed donkeys years ago. I mean, I've lost count how many years ago, to be honest, and it leaked. And I think there were occasions where we thought it might come out over the years, Toys R Us exclusives and all that kind of thing, but it never quite happened. With the exception of the second Doctor, it basically finishes off the five Doctors lineup. So like I said, it's a fantastic likeness of Richard Herndl. Got some great paint apps here. Very nice and crisp. Lovely work on the eyes. You know, you've got that raised eyebrow, which really gives him a lot of personality and a lot of expression. Beautiful work on the hair, the way that it's sculpted. That dark wash over the top, which really brings out the strands of hair in the sculpt. And overall, the paintwork is very good. I've got a little bit of paint bleed under his ear, but other than that, he looks amazing and I'm just so pleased that we finally have him and uh, he just absolutely looks the business. And then when we go down to the rest of the body, well, it's no surprise that they've just used the William Hartnell First Doctor body to recreate this version. It makes sense. The costume is very, very similar, but of course they've painted it to match the Five Doctors version. So we've got the black necktie and then when we go to the waistcoat, the waistcoat is different. It's just completely beige. You've got these sort of orangey buttons going through the middle, which are great because they really stand out. And then we have a slightly darker beige ribbon for his monocle. Now, as far as I can see in the episodes, he actually had more of like a bit of very thin black twine or string for the monocle. So obviously the sculpt did not allow for that. So I think just using a slightly darker color works just as well. And then moving down to the trousers, these are just in a plain dark gray. Again, very much like we see in the episode. He's got these shiny black shoes as well. But one of the things that I really love is that they've kept the fingerless gloves. So these are just the first Doctor's hands that we've seen before, just repainted so that you've got the dark gray for the gloves and the flesh color on the fingers. So in terms of articulation, he has all of the articulation from the previous Hartnell figures. Articulation at the head, which turns left to right shoulder joints, swivel joints that go all the way around, swivel joints at the bicep, at the elbow, swivel joints at the wrists, at the waist, the hip joints go out in front and then out to the sides, 
and then you also have swivel joints at the thighs and also a pivoting joint at the knee. There we go, like that. So overall, I'm really, really pleased with this figure. Obviously, there's a few discrepancies in terms of things, like I said, like the monocle, and I think even the lapels are slightly different on Richard Herndl's jacket compared to Hartnell's, but they're very minor. You know, it makes a lot of sense to just do a simple head swap. The one thing that is a shame is that he doesn't come with a walking stick. Uh, his walking stick is quite different to the one that Hartnell used. But we've had quite a few Hartnell figures over the years, so I'm sure you could easily swap it out with uh, another one, should you so wish. But overall, a really great figure. Very pleased to see this in the collection. And then we move on to the Dalek, the Five Doctors Dalek, which is potentially one of the most hopeless Daleks in Doctor Who because he's easily defeated by a set of mirrors. But less about that and let's take a look at the toy. So what they've done here is they've made a few modifications to the sort of previous 70s, 80s Dalek sculpts that we saw last year. There's a few new parts that I'm going to talk through, but overall, it looks great. It really does match the prop that we see in the story. I mean, to be honest, the one in the story is actually pretty knackered. This is probably too tidy for that Dalek. But as you can see, we've got some differences compared to previous Daleks in as much as, although the eye stalk is pretty much the same as previous 70s Daleks, the way that it's painted is quite different. It's all a solid gray. You've got the darker blackish gray on the rings, and then you've got the usual glossy black for the eye with the white iris and the black pupil. But of course, the main new part are the new dome lights, which are these very strange, very large red ones, which is exactly how it looks in the show. I'm not quite sure why it ended up like that, but that's the way it is. And I'm glad they were able to actually sculpt whole new dome light pieces for this, because I think, you know, they could have gone with just bog standard dome lights red, but uh, the fact that they went to that extra effort to make it look suitably different, I really appreciate. And then moving down to the neck bim, this is where things get different again, because we have the usual grill setup that we've seen on basically every classic series Dalek. But before you get to the shoulder sections, you can see there is this new piece right here, which sort of boosts everything up. So it's pushed everything up ever so slightly, just like on the actual props. And it just gives the Dalek a little bit of extra height. Now I'm not 100% sure why they started doing this, during the 80s, um, but I think they're on basically most, if not all Daleks during that period, they're all a bit taller, but it really does help give it the silhouette of one of those 80s Dalek props. And then moving down, we've got the new shoulder slats around the outside. Uh, again, I think this was something that we might have seen on last year's Daleks. I'm sure someone in the comments can correct me, but again, very well painted, lovely glossy paint for the slats, bog standard gray for the mesh, and then for the rest of the Dalek, it's the usual affair. We've got the gray for the skirt, the glossy black for the hemispheres, and then a matte black in the two-part fender at the bottom. One of the other details that is worth pointing out, we've got the plunger, which has got that glossy arm, but the little silver piece as well on the telescopic end of the plunger. But the thing that I really, really love, and I'm so glad they caught it, is the little orange nozzle inside the gun stick, because it's very prominent in the episode. So I'm really glad that they were able to catch that on the figure. And then for the Dalek, it's all the standard articulation we've come to expect from the Daleks. Swivel joint at the dome, does 360 degrees, pivoting eye stalk up and down, ball jointed plunger and gun stick, and then three wheels on the bottom to allow for a full range of Dalek movement. So overall, I'm really pleased with this set. Quite surprised to see it marked as one of the history of the Dalek sets. I thought this might have been like a, a little offshoot one, kind of like what we had with the Davros set last year, that creation of the Dalek set. But nope, this one is being classed as part of the main history of the Daleks. Really, really pleased with how it's turned out. Herndor is uh, a much wanted figure that finally finds its place in the collection. And I think they've done a really good job with the head sculpt. And likewise with the Dalek, you know, this could have been a very simple repaint of a bog standard Dalek. But I love the fact that they went to the extra effort to make sure it had the correct dome lights. They've elongated the shape to make it look more like those 80s Daleks. And like I said, I love that they've got the little orange dab of paint in the nozzle, just like on the actual prop. So there we go, guys. That is the History of the Daleks set number 13 from the Five Doctors. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and I shall see you all next time for another Doctor Who action figure review. Bye-bye.